This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to have a look at Turbo, and more specifically, the newer version of Turbo that's still in a pre release stage, and that's version 2.0. And with that, comes a lot of new features with broadcasting refreshes and also morphing DOMs on the page. And the idea of morphing within a Rails ecosystem isn't new. It's something that has existed within Stimulus Reflex for some time now. However, it is just now being brought into the Turbo library as a first-class citizen. So credit where credit is due there. I think that the Stimulus Reflex project is great and it has a lot of support. But it's also nice to see that kind of functionality brought right into the Rails ecosystem directly with Turbo. And so in this example project, we're going to have a session ID because we don't need the full user authentication for this. We can just track the session ID as the user reads the blog post and then makes a comment. So when the user makes a comment, it'll then get broadcasted to all the users. And the neat thing here is that we see the post and who was posted by, but then there's also a delete key. So if I were to bring up a separate browser that has a different session ID, and if we scroll down, this user who has that session ID is still able to delete the post, but then this user who does not have that session ID is not able to delete the post. And so let's go ahead and make another comment, and then we'll broadcast it automatically to both browsers, and you'll see that in this case, the receiver is not the author, so they can't delete the post. However, the author of the post does get that delete option. And there's been ways to handle this in the past, but it's always been a bit more involved. Where this snippet of code, where you have the posted time, who was posted by, and then any call to action links, would have to be a turbo frame tag, which you would then have to make another request back to your Rails application to render the appropriate links. However, with Turbo 8, we don't have to do all that. Because what's going to happen in the background when a user makes a comment and then that gets broadcasted out, there was an entire page refresh done on the other clients. And that could cause a lot of problems if, for say, a client is writing a message. So they have a message waiting to post. And then someone else comes in and makes a post before them. We wouldn't want this person's message to get deleted. And we also wouldn't want the screen to jump from where they're currently viewing because that could be just very distracting. So we can see that the refresh happened. And if I scrolled up a bit, we can see that the post came in, but the user still has the ability to type in their message and then submit it. That would then get broadcasted and so forth. And so that's the idea of the page refreshes. And it's something that you do want to be careful about because a page refresh isn't going to be good in every situation. For example, if you have a form that's using autofocus, that autofocus could cause a page to jump to the input box when a page refresh happens. So you still need to use caution on when this should be enabled or not. But in this example application, I think it's going to be simple enough to see some of the benefits around it. So we'll start with a fresh Rails application. And then I want to go ahead and get Action Text installed. That will install all the libraries and whatever is needed for it. I'm then going to generate a scaffold, and that's going to be for our posts. And the post will just have a title, and for the content, we'll use action text. I'll generate a model, and that model is going to be for our comments. And the comments will have a post with a belongs to. We'll also have a session, which will just make a string. And the content for our comment will also be action text. So let's go ahead and set up our posts in the models in our post. A post has many comments. And whenever a post is deleted, 
will also destroy the comments. And let's say a post also has rich text, and we'll just make this for our content, and the post has one attached, and we want to make this for our poster, so the banner image that goes across the post. In the form view, we can add in our poster, which is going to be a file field, and then we'll also have our content, which is going to be a rich text area. And so that's all we have to do on the form view. However, in the controller, whenever a new post is created, we also need to take in that poster and also the content as the allowed parameters. In the show page, where we want to display the post content, that just renders out the post partial. So we need to come into our partial and then we can change this up a bit. We can first check if there is a poster on our post and if it is attached, then we can display out the image tag and that's going to be for our post, poster, and let's just make this a variant where we resize to fill. And let's just call this about 1600 by 300. And we can give a class of image fluid, which I am using Bootstrap. So that's just going to make the image responsive. We then have a heading. And I want this heading to be a little bit more complicated. I just want it to be white and then in the center of our poster. So we can do a position dash absolute, and we want to do a top 50, a start 50, and we can do a translate middle, make our text white and a text center. And so I know there's a lot of debate about Tailwind or Bootstrap. And personally, I do still like Bootstrap. I think that Bootstrap 5 has come a long way with these utility classes, but it's still a component-based framework. But regardless, we can just show our post title and then we can show our post.content. And so now the view for our post is pretty much done, except now we also want to have a comment section where people can add in comments. And again, this is just the setup work prior to using Turbo 8. So I'm gonna generate a controller for our comments. I'm not gonna give it any actions right now, but what I do want to do is go into our routes.rb, and I want the comments to be a nested resource under our posts. So we'll have a resources for the comments and we're only going to use a few different actions. We're going to have our create action and then also the destroy action. We're not going to need the new action and we're not going to create an update functionality in this episode just to keep it a bit more simple, but we just want to really have the bare bones here. So under the controllers in the comments controller, because this is a nested resource under our post, I'm going to have a before action. And we're just going to set our post. That'll be a private method. And we'll just set our post instance variable equal to the post dot find by the params and the post ID. We then have our create action. And we also have our destroy action. The create action, we're just going to have a comment. And we're going to set that equal to our post dot comments. We'll create a new instance and we'll have our comment params. The comment params, again, will be another private method. And this is just the allow parameters. So we'll have our params will require a comment. And within the comments, we'll permit the content. So with our new instance of the comment, we can set our session is equal to the session.id. And then we can save the comment. So I'm not going to enable any of the broadcasting or the turbo streams just yet because I want to get the base functionality down first. Whenever a comment is destroyed, we'll set our comment is equal to the post.comments.find by the params ID. We can then destroy the comment and we'll just redirect the user and let's just redirect them back to the post. And we can also go ahead and do that for the create comment as well. And so now all we have to do for the setup work is under the post to have some way where the user can see the comments and then also a way for them to create a new comment. So I am going to put that outside of the post partial because I don't think it really belongs there. You could have a post comments partial if you wanted to, but I'm just going to put it into the show page. So we'll have the comments and then we'll have a list of all the comments. So we'll have a div with an ID of comments. And this part is going to be important for later because when the turbo goes to broadcast a new comment and we want to append it somewhere, we will need some kind of identifier to know where it should go. 
And then we'll also have another div, and this div is going to be for the new comments. So for the existing comments, let's just render out a partial. So we'll render a partial, and let's put this under the comments folder, and we'll render the comment. We'll have our collection of the comments, and we can also pass in the locals for the post, just in case if we need that within the comments partial, which could be important for deleting because a comment is a nested resource under the posts. And when we render a partial like this with a collection, then there's going to be a local variable comment for each one of these comments. And we can do something similar for the new comments. So we can render a partial, and I'm going to just call this new. We don't need to pass in the collection, but we still need to pass in our post, and we need a local variable comment just so we can create our form. And we'll just do a post.comments.new. Or you can do a comment new. That would work just as well. So under the comments folder in the views, we need to have two different partials. We need to have our comment.html.erb. And we also need to have the new.html.erb. For a new comment, we're just going to have a form with. And we'll have our model. Because it is a nested resource, we need to provide the post and the comment which we do have access to because in the show for the posts, we do have our locals, which are the local variables, post and comment that we are passing in. And again, we didn't have to do a post.comments.new here. We could just do a comment.new, but either one would work just fine. And just so we can reference to this particular form in the future, I am going to give it an ID and we'll just give it an ID of new underscore comment. Within this form, we can have our rich text area, and that's going to be for the content of the comment. And then we can also have a submit button. We'll give this a class, and we'll just add a margin top of three, and we'll make it a button and a button of primary. And so that's all we need to do in the new partial. In the comment partial, it is going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to have a content tag of div. And we need to give this an ID because if this is ever deleted, then we want to make sure that this comment is removed from the screen. And I like doing that with the DOM underscore ID of our comment. And we can give this a class just to make sure that the comments are a little bit separated from each other. So we'll have a card and we'll give it a margin bottom of three as well. We'll have a div with a class of our card body. And then we can have a paragraph with a class of our card text. And this is where we want to display the content of our comment. We could also display out all of the different action links. So we can say that this was posted and let's just do a time ago in words of our comment dot created at. So this will be like one minute ago. We could also have a posted by and let's just show the comment dot session. Here, you would do the comments user, username, or something similar like that. And then we can do a check if the session.id, we need to make sure that it is a string, is equal to the comment.session. Then we know that this user who is rendering this partial is the user who created the post. They are the author of it. And if they are the author, we can give a link to delete. And we want to delete this to the post and the comment. Because we are using turbo, we do need to add a data dash turbo dash method, and we want to make this delete. So back in the model for the comments, we do need to do the has rich text and for the content. And one last additional thing that we need to do, because we have our collection of comments, we could set this variable or we could call our post dot comments. So this should be ready to test out now. We can create a new post and I'll just copy and paste some information in. We'll select a pattern and then we'll have our L'Oreal Ipsum text and we can create our post. So that works. And now we can come down. We can add a comment and you see it took us back up to the top of the page because it did do a redirect. But the redirect, we do see the comment and we can add another one. When we post it again, it takes us back up to the top of the page which isn't really a great experience. We can delete the comments. When we delete it, it takes us back up to the top of the page again. So again, not a very good experience, but with 
the turbo morphing, we can actually resolve that. So if we come down into the gem file, we need to find the line for turbo rails and we need to add a specific version and that's going to be the 2.0.0 beta.2. We'll save this and we'll run bundle and I am using ES build for this, but we also need to make sure that our turbo rails from Hotwired is using version eight beta two or later. Once you update that in the package JSON, you could also run yarn to install those as well. And make sure you don't forget to restart your Rails application after you make those changes. So we need to come into our views, layouts, and in the application HTML ERB, in the head, we need to make a couple of different changes. So we now have a turbo refreshes with helper, and we can do a method, and we can also pass in a scroll parameter. If you want the default functionality, then the method you could use replace. For scroll, that would be reset. So enabling that, we're not going to change anything that we already have. However, if we change the method to morph, and if we change the scroll to preserve, we can also add in a yield head. Oh, and this should be refreshes with, not just refresh. But once we make that change, we can come back to our application and refresh. And now when I create a new comment, we'll create the comment. Notice it didn't take me all the way back up, but it kept my scroll position where it was. And so that's really great. That's a good experience, but it's not without some issues. And one of the issues is because I was rendering this partial, the JavaScript didn't load correctly. And now we can't create a new comment. So there are some things that we are going to have to fix around this. And I think that this is really just an illustration more so that you don't always want to apply that kind of refresh on every single page. And on the comments controller, on the create action, it was getting reapplied for the refresh because we did a redirect to that post. So if we did not redirect to that post, and if we refresh the page, we can give another test. And when we create this comment, we see that just nothing happened. If we create the comment again, again, nothing happened. But when you refresh the page, you'll then see that now there are two posts. So we want to add that post, but then also reset our form. And so this would be an example where you wouldn't want to use the redirect, but you do need something in its place. So we can do a render turbo stream, and I'm going to render an array because we need to do two different actions. We need to do a turbo stream dot replace. And we want to replace our new comment ID. So that's going to be the div or our form for the new comment. And we want to replace it with a partial. And the partial is going to be the comments forward slash new. And then we need to pass in some of the locals. So our locals that we had for that, we had our post. And that's going to be our instance variable post. And then comment. And here we can do the post.comments.new or just the comment.new, either one would work just fine. But we also need to do something else. We want to call the turbo stream dot append. So at the end of our comments, which is the ID element on the post show page for all of the comments, we want to append the partial and we want to append the comments and the comment. Again, we need to pass in some locals and the locals we need to pass in is for our post, which is our instance variable post. And for the comment, that is our instance variable for the comment. And this will work, but it's not really taking advantage of our turbo broadcasts, or it's not taking advantage of the new turbo morphs. But it does give the functionality that we are looking for for this particular user. So we can create our comments, and we see that it posts it, and it resets the form. Where this is going to come into handy, is when we start broadcasting. So right now, if I put in a comment and I save it, it's only showing up on my page. The other user has no idea a new comment was created. And to do that, we would have to broadcast. And so let's start out with the original way of broadcasting within our comment model. So whenever we create a new comment, we want it to broadcast to our post. So we could do a broadcasts underscore two and the post. So that does mean on the show page for the post where we have all of our comments, we want to subscribe to a channel that can then receive them. So we have a turbo 
stream from, or post. And so just those two changes are all that we need to do. And again, remember, this is the original way of doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh both browsers. And then I'll create another comment on the left-hand side. And we see it broadcasted to both. However, there is something a little bit strange. You see that there is no delete button on either side. If I were to refresh the right-hand side, there's still not that session ID. But if I were to refresh the left-hand side, then the ID link shows up. And this can be a very frustrating thing, and it's something that you want to make sure that it's done properly. What's happening is when this is broadcasting back to the post, that's happening in a background job. This comment partial is getting rendered, and it's getting appended to the div with the ID of comments. However, there is a check if the session ID string is equal to the comment session. Well, the background job doesn't have a session ID. And so that's why I broadcast it without that link to delete. This is going to be a lot more problematic in situations where maybe it's not a session ID that you're looking at, but maybe you're trying to reference a current underscore user is equal to the comment dot user. That's going to have a lot more problems in background jobs. So instead, what we can do in the comments, we don't want to just do a broadcast to our post channel. Instead, with the Turbo Rails 2.0 beta and with the Turbo 8 and the morphing, we could do a broadcasts underscore refreshes to the post. And what that's going to do, if we look at the source code for the broadcastable in the Turbo Rails gem, I'll just do a search for that. We see that this broadcast refreshes to is going to be an after commit. If we wanted a bit more functionality, then we could just do the broadcast refreshes and then to our post. And then that'll also handle the after create, after update, and after destroy. But what's going to happen is that it's not going to render out that comment partial and broadcast it. But instead, what's going to happen is that this is going to send a message to each one of the browsers to then refresh the page. And so this is going to be really interesting. So we'll refresh both of the pages. We'll then send another test message. And just for now, I'm going to put a test message on the right-hand side, but not submit it. We'll just submit the left-hand one. And when we create this comment, we then see a post on both sides. We did get the delete link on this side, but on this side, we did not. So that's exactly what we want. However, if we scroll down a bit, we see that this side rendered our partial correctly for the new comment, but on the right-hand side, it broke it. And so that's another thing that you have to be really careful on with the broadcast refreshes, is that as we saw that there was an issue before that we had to come up with our own solution for in the comments controller, which as a side note, you don't have to do this directly in line in the comments controller. Instead, we could have under the views of our comments, we could have our create.turbo underscore stream dot ERB. And within here, we can then display out our turbo stream and we can render out another turbo stream. It's really up to you on how you want to do that. Personally, I don't mind it happening in the controller, but you might be more comfortable doing this in a turbo stream dot ERB. It doesn't matter. But the point is we handle that situation in the create action. What we need to do is we need to come up with some way when there's a broadcast refresh and the other user's browsers is refresh that we are not messing with this comments new partial. And luckily, there is a way that we can do that. We can add a data dash turbo dash permanent. And essentially what this is going to do is that it's going to say that even though we are refreshing the page, we want to replace the DOM of everything except for this particular part. Notice we're not giving this div any specific ID or anything. We just had this data turbo permanent. So now if we come back and refresh both pages, we can create another comment. And on the right hand side, we'll have another comment again. We'll then create the post on the left hand side. We'll see it broadcast it on both sides, but we still retain the comment on the right hand side. The user on the right hand side can create the comment and then that gets broadcasted to both places. 
And another nice thing about this is if I am making an update to the blog post, and if we had people making comments, I would not want to inconvenience them by making their page shift all the way back up to the top. So I've just made a change on this blog post and I'm going to update it. It did update on my side. And if I come up, we can see that it wasn't changed because we're not doing any broadcasting. If we were to come up to our post model, and if we were to just do the broadcast refreshes, that's going to automatically assume for that record. I'm going to just go ahead and refresh the page on both sides. We can then edit this blog post again. I'll just delete another paragraph. So it should start with the get. We'll update the post. It updated. And if we scroll up to the top, we see that it did update as well and it got broadcasted, but the user never lost their place of where they were working. And so you do want to be careful with this because it is doing a full page load. So if we were to broadcast and if we were to look at the elements, this is a very simple application. So the page refresh was only 10 kilobytes. So it's not that big, but if you had a really large page that had a lot of content, and if it was already a very heavy page, then doing the broadcast refreshes on those pages could actually slow the application down quite significantly. So I do think it's a tool that can be very helpful to use in many different situations, but it's also something that you don't want to just enable on every single model because that's going to add just a undue burden on your server for what could be not much functionality in return. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.